Greetings, companions, and welcome back to another vignette series of Masons and Their Music. You know, war produces many things, one of which is irony. And we have irony to present today in the form of two Master Masons connected through music. You probably know that Julia Ward Howe was the authoress of the poem that became the Battle Hymn of the Republic. But it was a poem, and it was published as that. And she went searching for music. And she heard John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave, and the meter of the music matched her lyrics with just a little bit of adjustment on her part. And she put the two together, and the North had its battle anthem, which was prominently used throughout the entire Civil War. Well, as it turns out, John Brown's body was written by William Steffi, who was a master mason from South Carolina. That's one irony. The other is commemorated, I believe, 159 years ago when we had the first battle of Manassas or the first battle of Bull Run. The South tended to name a battle according to the location, and the North according to any body of water which may have been near. So you have the Battle of Antietam Creek, or the Battle of Sharpsburg, and the Battle of Bull Run, first and second, or the Battle of Manassas. Well, something happened in the first Battle of Manassas with regard to music. George F. Root was a prominent musician uh, in the years leading up to and after the American Civil War, and he wrote a song, and he very cleverly gave it two sets of lyrics. One was a set of rallying lyrics, and the other was a set of battle lyrics. The rally lyrics were to help gin up support for the war, and the battle lyrics were for the soldiers to sing the song when they marched into combat. Well, J.L. Schreiner, a Southern composer, heard George Root's melody and liked it, but he changed the lyrics to express sentiments from a Southern point of view. So when the two armies met at Manassas in July of 1861, they were singing the same tune, but a very different song. George F. Root, by the way, was not only a master mason, but was a high priest of a royal arts chapter in Vermont, and after the war, deputy grand commander of the Grand Commandery of Vermont of Knights Templar. Here is George F. Root's song, The Battle Cry of Freedom, or Rally Round the Flag. So a southerner gave the northerners their music, and a northerner gave the southerners their music. Irony. It happens in war. Next month we'll be back with a vignette that deals with a young man who was so determined to become a Marine that he threatened his parents if they didn't allow it, he would run off and join the circus. Until then, Stay healthy and be well.